Okay, so this is part two of the review, and this part's going to cover derivatives. So the first one should be super easy. This is just the power rule. So when I go to take the derivative, 2 times 12 is 24. I have x. The 10x becomes 10, and the 11 is gone. Um, 14, similar, but we have to do one step of rewriting first. So I'm going to make this 3x to the 1 half power. I have 5x cubed, and then I have 9x to the negative 2. Now I'm ready to take the derivative, again using the power rule. So the half comes down, I have 3 halves, I have x to the negative 1 half. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, x will be squared. The negative 2 comes down, I have negative 18, when I subtract 1 I get negative 3. Um, nothing you need to do with that, that is the answer, and we just go on to the next one. So starting simple, just doing power rule, but if there's a rewrite, make sure you do it. So you shouldn't be surprised. Um, as we move on, I'm going to do kind of an example of everything. So this one is quotient rule. So we're starting low, 4t minus 2. d high is 2t minus high t squared. Derivative of the bottom is just 4 all over the numerator squared. Okay. Um, I do expect you to pretty this up. I mean, we're this far into the semester, you know how to do it. So 2t times 4t, this is 8t squared. I have 2t times 2, so there's negative 4t. Make sure you pay attention to this minus sign. So I have minus 4t squared over 4t minus 2 squared. All right, one more step. I have a negative 4t squared. I have a positive 18, 8t squared, so that can be combined to 4t squared minus 4t over 4t minus 2 squared, right? So this is the way I would want the answer. If you want to factor out a 4t, that's fine too, but I think that's good enough. Okay, 16, um, this is chain rule using e. So I have 7e to the 3x plus 4, so you write 7e to the 3x plus 4. Don't forget, do the derivative of 3x plus 4, which is 3. So you're going to get 21e to the 3x plus 4. Um, 17 also chain rule, but this is like generalized power rule. So here I'm going to start by bringing down the power of 4. I write the whole thing 8x squared minus 7x plus 9 now to the power 3. So there's just the power part. Then you have to go back inside and say 8x squared becomes 16x, 7x is minus 7, and the 9 goes away. Um, you're done. There's nothing more I expect you to do on that one. So this is the answer. Um, 18, I might not look at it at first, but it is exactly the same as the last one as far as it's just the chain rule. So I'm going to keep the 9. I'm going to write 3x to the 7th plus 12. My power is negative 1. So I'm not going to do the quotient rule because that 9 doesn't have an x. So now I take the derivative. The negative 1 comes down. I have negative 9. I have 3x to the 7th plus 12. Now it's to the negative 2. Back inside, I need to multiply and find this derivative. So 3 times 7 is 21, x to the 6th. All right. Um, you could, if you want to, you could multiply, like put this 9 together with this 21. So I'm going to do that. This is going to be negative. Um, this will be 189. This is x to the 6th over 3x, or it's times 3x to the 7 plus 12 to the negative 2, or you can write negative 189x to the 6th over 3x to the 7th plus 12 squared. Um, I am happy with either one of these answers. So you pick which one you like. Oh, let's make sure I keep that negative sign in there. Um, but whichever one you want to give me, I'm happy to take either one. Let me see if the eraser at least works and get rid of this like little mess that I made. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Alright, so we've done the quotient rule, we've done the chain rule, we need to do the product rule. So it's product because even when you say it, you should be reading this as 7x squared times 3x minus 5. Um, and then there's that choice of, well, you could do the product rule, but I'm actually not going to, even though I told you product rule would be coming. Um, the 3x minus 5 doesn't have a power, so I can multiply through. So 7x squared times 3x is 21x cubed. 
7x squared times 5 is minus 35x squared. So if you want to do the product rule, I can get away from it because there's no power to that 3x minus 5, so I just did distribution of the 7x squared. Now this is an easy one. Um, the 21 times 3 is 63x squared. The 35 times 2 is 70x, and we're done. Oh, I just wrote on the paper in a weird place. Let's get rid of that. I don't want you to like, like think what's that. Okay, this one though, this one I can't get rid of. This one is going to be the product rule. It's 5x squared times natural log of x. So when I do the derivative, let's start with the 5x squared. It's 10x. Keep the natural log of x. Then you say plus. You go back to 5x squared. And then you multiply by the derivative of the ln, which is 1 over x. So remember product, we said it's 1 at a time. It doesn't really matter which one you do first. Um, you just want to do 1 at a time. There's a plus sign, so it's going to be the same either way. I am going to fix this a little, say this is 10x ln of x. This um, x squared 1 over x just becomes 5x, so this is the answer I would want you to give me. Alright, number 21 again is a chain rule, it's um, what I would call chain chain, because the square root is the first chain, that's the generalized power rule. But I also see the e inside with the 6x minus 3, so there's a second chain. So I have 5e to the 6x minus 3 plus 9x minus 2 to the positive 1 half power. When I take the derivative, the first thing that happens is that 1 half comes down. I rewrite everything exactly as it was inside. And now my new power is negative 1 half. Back inside, I have 5e to the 6x minus 3, then times the derivative of 6x minus 3, which is 6, and then plus 9. It's really important that you multiply this 6 right beside the e, not after you go to the 9x. So it has to be right now, right by the 5e to the x is the 6. Um, we could make this just one little bit slightly better. So here's 5 half, or sorry, there's 1 half, 5e, to the 6x minus 3 plus 9x minus 2. Here's to the negative 1 half. I'm just going to multiply 5 times 6 and call it 30 e to the 6x minus 3 plus 9. So this, I kind of wrote through it. Let's see if I can fix that. I was trying to like mark it off so you could see it. Maybe I'll do it in another color. Oops, that didn't work at all. This is my answer. Okay. Um, this next one, hopefully you can still see through there, this is a natural log rule. So with natural log, I always think any log, I know that it's going to be a fraction. Whatever I'm taking the log of goes on the bottom, so there's 12x plus 3. The derivative of 12x plus 3 is 12, you can write it on top. Um, or you, you have to, there's no you can, you will. Um, if you wanted to, you can see that everything's divisible by 3 here. So if I wanted to make this 3 times 4 and take a 3 out and make this 4x plus 1, um, I could choose to do that and then cancel the 3s. And then that would just leave me with, oops, that didn't work. Um, 4 over 4x plus 1. You don't have to do that. You could leave it as the 12 over 12x plus 3, or if you want to do 4 over 4x plus 1, that's fine with me too. I'm, I'm happy with either one of those. Okay, <clears throat> and this one is just another natural log, just a little bit bigger. So when I start it, oh, and it's t because I wrote t, um, so let's put a t here. Again, looking at the log says make it a fraction. Whatever's in the parentheses, that is going on the bottom. So 4t squared minus 7t plus 15. The derivative of that, 4t squared is 8t, and this minus 7t is just negative 7. All right, so no, nothing else to do. That one's perfectly fine. All right, um, so that's where I'm going to stop this one. That just covered rules for derivatives, and then we'll come back and we'll do some increasing, decreasing, all that kind of fun stuff.